What's up, YouTube? Welcome. <coughs> <coughs> Wait, hold up. There we go. What's up, YouTube? I'm Gun, and welcome to episode one of a brand new series. Super excited. I'm like a stripper. Join me today in going down the rabbit hole. So let me give you a quick 10 second introduction into what exactly this series is going to be about and then we'll jump straight into it. So going down the rabbit hole is where we take one idea or topic or question and then we just chase it and see where each tangent and train of thought leads us until it gets to the weird part of the internet. So basically, if you are a procrastinator, if you have exams coming up or deadlines or you just have time to waste and you don't know what to do and you, you know, want to just know some random things, this is the perfect video for you, hopefully. Ah, we'll find out. And then it'll be fun for me because, you know, cancer gets boring. And yes, I am wearing a pink tank top. Why? Because it's summer and it's hot. And when it's summer and it's hot, why can't you wear a tank top? Now enough dilly-dallying, uh, on with the video. So where was I? So the first starting topic or question slash thing is going to be the World Cup. Now fortunately, I was diagnosed with cancer just as the World Cup was about to start. I say fortunately. Can you ever really be fortunately diagnosed with cancer? Anywho, I'm at home, I get to watch every single match, every single game without having to fake calling in sick. Now, if you don't follow the World Cup, this should still be fun. This isn't going to be completely just focused on the World Cup. We're going to start by looking at some fun facts. For example, did you know that the first ever World Cup tournament was in... in 1930? And this took place in Uruguay from 13th to the 30th of July. So it actually only took, what, 17 days, which is a lot shorter than it is now. There were only 13 teams in the first World Cup compared to the 32 that we have now. Although, uh, I think it's like a total of like 200 different countries compete. This is what this is for. Google gone Google. The World Cup is apparently the largest international team sport competition in the world with a qualification process required to reduce the countries from 211 to 32. So what is that? That's like a seventh? 16% or something? 14%. I probably should have said this earlier, but for those of you who don't know what the World Cup is, it's like the Olympics of football, right? National teams get together and they try and get the big golden big cup thing, which is a, the big golden trophy with like a globe on the top and the ding. I think it's made of gold. Is it made of gold? The original one apparently was stolen in 1983 and never recovered. And then the subsequent trophy called the FIFA World Cup trophy was introduced in 1974 and is made of 18 karat gold with a malachite base. And it stands at about 36.8 centimeters high, which is about this big and weighs about 6.1 kilograms. So how much is it worth, do you think? The Italian sculptor who made it was Silvio Gazzaniga. He's not a football fan apparently, but he does watch the World Cup. And at the time, the cost was about 50,000 US dollars, which was 1971. Today, the trophy is worth... Whoa! 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 Jeez! Today, the trophy is worth apparently over 10 million US dollars. What can you buy for... So you can buy 10 million cups of McDonald's coffee. How, how much is a yacht? So the Lamborghini, Gallardo, Gallardo, Galada. No! Car prices are around 200,000. So you can buy 50 Lamborghinis with this one single World Cup. 50 Lamborghinis for a single World Cup. That's crazy. Is that right? Asian maths. Oh gosh, here we go. Seven disappointing facts about the World Cup trophy. If it was solid gold, it would weigh about 70 kilos. But as we found out earlier, it only weighs about six kilos. Therefore, it's not. You don't get to keep it. So the winning nation gets to lift the trophy, but the celebrations are over when they take home a cheaper replica. The F FIFA keeps the original. The replica is actually gold-plated. Uh, also, the Jules Rimet Cup, the original one, which was actually, it looks kind of like a, a Brit or a BAFTA, Statue of Liberty, some sort of wings of, I'll put a photo up here. Magic of editing again. That was awarded permanently to Brazil for winning three uh, World Cups. 
before it was stolen. Probably melted down and sold. Well, apparently it was stolen once before uh, it was stolen, like finally, in 1966 from an exhibition in Westminster, but then eventually it's found under a hair wrapped up in newspaper, like fish and chips. How very British. Ooh, interesting. So on the trophy, they do engrave the names of the countries that have won it. We are apparently running out of space and there are only about four more names available to go on. By the time it gets to 2030, we'll probably uh, have a replacement. Now, where was I? What was I talking about? I probably should have said this earlier, but for those of you who don't know what the World Cup is... <laughs> ah, for those of you who don't know what the World Cup is. Yes, so it's a huge competition. At the moment, they do 32 teams uh, in the World Cup finals. This lasts about a month, a month and a day or something. It basically battles out to see who is the best footballing nation. By football, I mean football as in football, as in you kick a ball with your foot. Uh, the Americans might call it soccer. <laughs> oh gosh. Why is soccer called soccer? So the word soccer actually comes from the word association football. So in England, rugby also counts as rugby football. So that's why you see some rugby teams that have the letters RFC afterwards, because that stands for rugby football club. So when they first coined the official name for football as in soccer football, they called it association football. And so they decided to shorten that association, a sock, to soccer football. So technically, I guess you should be calling it soccer football. Or you could just call it football. What is that beeping noise? <laughs> There are a few famous countries and different teams that generally do better than other countries. Fortunately, this whole series is made a lot easier by Wikipedia. Oh, have you guys ever played the Wikipedia game? Oh, have you guys ever... Oh, 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 oh. Gangnam Style. So, there have been 20 World Cup tournaments. We have eight countries that have won it. So, Spain has won it once. France has won it once. Uh, England has won it once. And we're going to win it again this year. It's coming home, boys. Korea are out, so I'm very much rooting for England now. <laughs> Uruguay have won it twice. <laughs> and Brazil has won it five times. Italy have won it consecutively, 1934, 1938. Germany, unfortunately, had a chance this year, but were knocked out by Korea. <laughs> you know what? A lot of these sports competitions are done every four years, like the Olympics, um, the World Cup. Ah, so apparently, it's for the World Cup at least, it's because of the vast amount of qualification matches. Wait, what? What are these lies? Ah, so the whole four years thing for the World Cup, it wasn't really a, a planned thing, it was more of a, oh, you know what, can every nation, like, travel every four years? Like, we're talking 1930. Yeah, this is way before um, transport and international travel was easy. And now the Olympic Games. This has a different history. Because obviously the, the Olympic Games go all the way back to um, ancient Greece, where they were held every four years. This was just a tradition. The Olympic Games, they were revived by Pierre de Coubert Coubertin in 1896. Interesting. I am Friday the 6th of July, just about to start the quarterfinals in like half an hour. Brazil, Belgium, ooh, ooh. My money's on Brazil. To be fair, my money was on Spain and also Portugal and Argentina. In other words, my opinion means nothing. <laughs> um, 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 so one thing I love about just generally in life are records, World Cup records, Guinness World Records, stuff like that. And here are some of my favourite ones from the World Cup. Oh wow, Korea actually have one. The most 17th to 32nd place finishes. <laughs> Carvajal from Mexico, Mexico. He has had the most tournaments played, which is five. He's also captained at five different World Cup tournaments, which I think is an amazing task. Youngest player ever was Norman Whiteside of Nor Northern Ireland, uh, who was 17 years and 41 days old. The oldest player ever was 45 years and 161 days. This was for Egypt. Oh, he's actually played this year. Well, well done to Esam El Haddari. The oldest player to debut in a World Cup Finals tournament was also Esam El Haddari. Damn, well done. Absolute. Salute you, sir. Salute you. Longest period between World Cup Finals appearances was Farid Mondragon. Mon Mondragon? That's like Mount Dragon. That's a sick name. 
I'll leave a link to the Wikipedia, or you guys can Google it, you know, it's not hard. <gasps> it sounds so mean to my viewers. Okay, so, Cristiano Ronaldo. His net worth, $400 million. Wow. Wow. Now, what can you get for $400 million? You can get 2,000 Lamborghinis. Why would you not do that? I wonder what Ronaldo's house looks like. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, suit you, suit you, suit you. Oh, suit you, oh, suit you. It looks like a weird palace stadium thing. What do you guys think? I do know that, uh, was it Shaquille O'Neal actually has a huge house. Ah, Shaq was actually recently on the Ellen show. Ellen DeGeneres. So generous that her name has the word generous in it. Eat your heart out, Oprah. Shaq. Shaq's babysitting gig led to his Google riches. Interesting. This man is huge. How tall is Shaq while this video goes on? Is 2.16 meters. He's seven foot one and 150 kilograms. That's a huge house. 76,000 square feet. Playing with the kids at the next table. So after the meeting, he says, you know what? You're good with kids. I like you. I'm gonna bring you in on this investment. And it was called Google. He said, you know, in the future, you're going to be able to type on your phone, search engine this, do this, boom, boom, boom. You should invest. I invested, and then a couple of years later, I got a really big return. Yes, you did. That's amazing. Wow. See, what it, you just play with kids sometimes, and it pays off. I play with kids all the time. Tell us about the movie. It looks Please don't take that out of context. Shaq and Charles Barkley. Am I the only one that always gets Charles Barkley mixed up with Niles Barkley? Is that meant to be a thing? Is that related? Is that a reason for that? Google gone Google. So just in case you guys don't know, Niles Barkley is the guy that sang crazy. Does that make me crazy? Oh wait, no, Niles, sorry. CeeLo Green is the guy that sang it. Niles Barkley is, the, is the, the group, the duo. Although many people believe that their name has something to do with the former NBA player Charles Barkley, when Sanjeev asked them about it, Danger Mouse replied, nope. It's just like everything else on this record, there was no conscious decision about stuff. There's no conscious decision about stuff. It just happened, did it? it yeah, yeah, Danger Mouse just, just happened. Danger Mouse, that was a really good TV program, I think, right? Danger Mouse? Yeah, if you guys haven't seen it, I used to love it. It was like most posh British James Bond mouse thing ever. It was, it was hilarious. You know what, I'll slip in a little clip right now. Might be Canaletto. Oh, I like Canaletto. I didn't know you knew about art, Pimpo. Art? It's the tomato sauce I like. That's cannelloni, Pimpo. No, I think it's a Michelangelo. A Penfold? He used to be like a... What is it? Penfold? Was he a mole? Was he a... Penfold is often mistaken for a mole, so he's not. A Penfold is indeed a hamster, which makes sense. A hamster and a, uh, and a mouse. Wait, where? So, where, wait, what? Wait, how do we get here? Danger Mouse? World Cup. What? How did I get here? You know it's been a good session when you ask yourself, wait, what? Well, how much is Messi worth? Who do you think is worth more, Ronaldo or Messi? I'm thinking Ronaldo. So this is according to a website called WealthyGorilla.com. So as of 2018, Messi uh, is worth $80 million. So Messi will receive $667,000 a week. That's two Lamborghinis. No, three Lamborghinis every single week. This one says that he is worth roughly 400 million, making him one of the richest athletes in the world. Which begs the question, who is the richest athlete in the world? Michael Jordan. Makes sense. Whoa, okay. Michael Jordan is apparently worth $1.31 billion. So how much does it cost to actually host a World Cup? Woo! Oh, no, no, wait, this is all wrong. Okay, no, sorry. Let me get, let me... So this is according to sunny.co.uk. It says that Russia has allegedly spent close to $3 billion on $3 billion on upgrading stadiums and whatnot for the World Cup. I guess most of the money will be on, on stadium renovations, right? Or am I just being... It's important. Okay, so let's leave that uh, there for today. I quite enjoyed the trip down the rabbit hole. Let me know what you guys think. Hopefully, this series will become something that we all can enjoy together. It'll be a good way for me to waste time as well. So, as per usual, leave a like if you liked. Leave a dislike if you disliked. And leave any comments and feedback, what you think about the series, or uh, any suggestions for uh, first topic slash first ideas. I'll call it... What's a good name? The Carrot? 
you know, basically any suggestions for starting topics or questions for going down the rabbit hole with. And last but not least, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Let's go challengers.